from his behaviors that, uh, that he'll personalize things. Personalize it. He will take it personal. Mm -hmm. Accident. If you were president by accident, you might do some of the things Donald Trump is doing. I think he Last night wasn't the usual evening where Republicans enjoyed their snacks while listening to Trump's campaign speeches. Instead, it turned out to be shocking and brutally heart-wrenching. Campaign rally for former President Donald Trump in Butler, Pennsylvania, Saturday. Trump said a bullet struck him in the ear. Yep, you heard that right. And now the world is now condemning this cowardly attack on the former president of the USA. Brett, this moment is, is just shocking. This is not something our country ever wants to experience or see. May have lost Brett there. From news channels to the die-hard Republicans. We were a half an inch from the shit hitting the fan. Literally a half an inch, okay? And these loser freaking Antifa, that's who they are. To the notable world leaders. A lot of response from world leaders. Let's start with the British Prime Minister, Keir Starmer. Now, he has said on X that he was appalled, adding that polit... And even the celebrities form all over the world. Really? So that blood was Tabasco sauce on his face? January 6th was staged. People died on January 6th. Was that part of the program? Everyone around the world is deeply saddened and heartbroken since the news broke. But you know, when something odd is going on, fearless rapper 50 Cent never hesitate. A little sleepy sometimes. It just felt like he was a little sleepy, like you're getting tired. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a little too much for him. So how can he remain silent when the former world leader has suffered a assassinate attack? He is the significance of African-American men in this election. Thank you, everybody. For both Thank of you. you. I see them identifying with Trump. Why do you say that? Because they got RICO charges. But have you guys thought about why the world has taken a U-turn right after just one attack? Man, I am in no way, shape, or form a Trump fan. But some of y'all gotta knock it off with this conspiracy theory shit. Where has all that hate gone when he was considered to be the most hated leader of the world? Why is everyone now on his side suddenly? Oh, Trump, most hated guy in America because all of his peers that he was competing with in their 30s, in their 40s. And it looks like the latest details shared by the FBI might change the dynamics forever. How Trump will be seen from now on could be completely different. The point is there's gonna be a lot of other stuff that we're gonna hear about in the next you know, couple hours, tomorrow, and a bunch of other things that's coming in with people texting me left and right. So let's dive right into the recent developments about the attack and how the world is reacting. Why has the whole dynamic around Trump changed? Was it staged? Was it all about getting sympathy from the general public? Was it part of his election campaign? And how is 50 Cent taking this incident? There's a lot more to cover. A series of celebrities, including rapper 50 Cent and singer Kid Rock, took to social media in reaction to the attempted assassination of former President Trump at a rally in Pennsylvania. 50 Cent posted a photo Saturday on the social platform X of his studio album, Get Rich or Die Tryin, with Trump's head edited onto the rapper's body. Trump gets shot and now I'm trending, shoulder shrug emoji, the rapper wrote above the photo. In an earlier post by the rapper that has since been deleted, 50 Cent posted a photo showing the moment Trump raised his fist in the air, moments after he was grazed and bloodied by a bullet. The rapper attached his song, Many Men Wish Death, and wrote, I know the vibes, we are all in trouble now. The lyrics of the song include, Many men wish death upon me, blood in my eye. It was not immediately clear why the post was deleted. Shortly after Fiddy, country singer Scotty McCreary said Saturday he was praying for the country, while singer Dave Matthews reacted on stage at a show in Virginia. That's no way to behave. My condolences to the family of the people who were hurt. But good grief, man, that's no way to run a democracy. That's no way to be part of a democracy, he said, according to a video by a user on X. But you see, there must be something very serious that went on and even made 50 Cent to take his side. So what actually happened? At his rally in Butler, Pennsylvania on Saturday evening, Donald Trump started off just like he always does, with the crowd chanting, USA, USA, and Trump clapped and pointed to people People in the crowd before he stepped up to speak. Bystanders that are there on that scene are going to be perhaps witnesses or to help law enforcement to try to determine what took place here. 
about 150 yards north of the former president, a guy climbed onto a building roof outside the rally's security zone. He had an AR-style gun with him. Six minutes into Trump's speech, the guy aimed at him and pulled the trigger. What happened next was pretty incredible and historic. The gunman, later named as 20-year-old Thomas Matthew Crooks by the FBI, fired several shots, one of which Trump said grazed his ear. Trump quickly dropped to the ground. Five Secret Service agents rushed to shield him on stage, while more gunfire popped off from two more bursts across the Butler Farm showgrounds. The building wasn't better secured. So when you do a security plan, you've got the the main security, right, the security perimeter where there's the magnetometers, where people are being checked as they're entering the... Just 43 seconds after the first shot, a Secret Service agent reported the shooter was down. Trump, with blood on his ear and face, was helped to his feet. He definitely raised his fist to reassure his supporters before agents escorted him off stage and into his SUV. Tragically, at least three rally attendees were shot and one of them died. Former President Trump says he is okay after being hit by a bullet just minutes into giving a speech at a Pennsylvania rally. This incident is being treated as an assassination attempt, marking the first time since 1981 when John Hinckley Jr. targeted Ronald Reagan that a current or former president has faced gunfire. It's still unclear how the shooter managed to get such a clear shot at Trump, and investigations are ongoing to understand any security lapses that may have occurred. Attendees have provided more details, describing chaos right after the gunfire and expressing concerns about the gunman even before he climbed onto the roof near the rally site. This turned what was supposed to be a regular political gathering into a moment of both extraordinary political significance and a tragic crime scene. A huge crowd had gathered at the showgrounds in Butler, a small city about 30 miles north of Pittsburgh, eager to catch a glimpse of the former president at what was billed as his last campaign rally before the Republican National Convention starting Monday. In the lead-up, all eyes were on Trump's opponent, with questions swirling about President Joe Biden's candidacy and whether it could weather the defections from his own party following a lackluster performance at the CNN presidential debate in June. When Trump arrived in Butler, the focus was shifting towards the upcoming convention in Milwaukee. There was great anticipation surrounding his upcoming announcement of a running mate, and he was just days away from officially accepting his party's nomination for president for the third time in a row. In Butler, Trump's supporters many sporting the iconic red Make America Great Again hats, eagerly awaited his speech despite the scorching mid-July weather with temperatures soaring around 90 degrees Fahrenheit. They had come prepared to endure hours in the sun just to hear from their leader. Two and a half hours before Trump appeared on stage, rally-goers enjoyed the typical pre-show festivities. There was a prayer, followed by the recitation of the Pledge of Allegiance and a stirring rendition of the national anthem sung by a 16-year-old. A lineup of Trump's staunch supporters, including two congressmen and a Senate candidate, also took the stage to fire up the crowd before the main event began. He was very upbeat and excited about the rally because it was such a great turnout, said Dave McCormick, the Republican Senate candidate in Pennsylvania, who saw Trump before the shooting. McCormick was whisked into the venue through a private entrance manned by members of the Secret Service. There, someone waved a security wand around him to ensure he was not carrying a weapon. Security, he said on Sunday, seemed tight. Other attendees had to go through magnetometers or walk through metal detectors to get into the rally. At the event, Crooks initially drew attention from local law enforcement for suspicious behavior near the magnetometers, as reported by a senior law enforcement official. Officers were alerted to keep an eye on him, and this information was also passed on to the Secret Service. A local officer actually spotted Crooks before he opened fire, but couldn't intervene immediately, according to Butler County Sheriff Michael T. Sloop speaking to CNN. The officer had been searching the area in response to reports of a suspicious individual outside the rally perimeter. Eventually, officers discovered Crooks on the roof, where one officer helped another to get a better view. When Crooks realized he had been spotted, he turned and aimed his gun at the officer, prompting the officer to take cover to protect himself. As the first gunshots echoed across the showgrounds, rally goers cried out. Members of the crowd in the bleachers behind Trump ducked, mirroring the former president, their faces a mix of confusion and fear. When one final gunshot rang out, a loud scream pierced the air. 
It was all of a sudden just chaos, said McCormick, an Army combat veteran, describing the moment the Secret Service converged on the former president, shielding Trump with their own bodies. Behind him, people were gathered around a victim, trying to administer first aid until medical assistance could make its way through the dense crowd. Adding to the chaos and confusion, a tractor parked on the other side of the stage let out a massive cloud of steam, apparently having been hit by a stray bullet. Joseph Maine, a surgeon from nearby Grove City, was filming Trump's speech on his phone. It was his first Trump rally, he said, when he heard the gunshots and saw the former president get hit. He said that when he looked to see where the gunshots originated, he saw a man who had been shot in the head. Mine was sure the sound was gunfire, but many other attendees thought they were hearing fireworks. Half the crowd was in shock, and the other half thought it was some type of weird joke, Maine said. Rico Elmore, a former Pennsylvania legislative candidate who had spoken at the rally earlier, vaulted over a barrier to reach a wounded attendee. He later told CNN, All we know is shots were fired, and then I jumped over the barrier and put my hand on the guy's head that was profusely bleeding, he said, visibly shaken, his own white button-down shirt by that time stained with blood. Elmore didn't know the man. Just a stranger, he said. Mine said he helped carry the body of the man out of the stands. After the shooting at the rally, Trump was rushed to a local hospital and the world anxiously awaited updates on his condition. 30 minutes after the incident, the Secret Service communications chief confirmed on social media that Trump was safe and that investigations were underway. Shortly afterward, Trump's spokesman issued a statement reassuring the public that the former president was fine and receiving medical attention at a nearby facility. And do you think that this attack stopped Trump from talking about it? Well, you might be wrong because the wounded lion is more dangerous, and so is Trump. And almost two hours after the attack, he was on social media. As he so often does, Trump would fill in more details about what happened through his own social media. I was shot with a bullet that pierced the upper part of my right ear. I knew immediately that something was wrong and that I heard a whizzing sound, shots, and immediately felt the bullet ripping through the skin. Much bleeding took place, so I realized then what was happening. Trump posted on Truth Social at 8.42 p.m., thanking law enforcement for their quick response and expressing condolences for the attendee who was K. This reaction added more fuel to the situation, and if his motive was to gather sympathies from the world, it seems like he may have succeeded in it, which will also help him to become the president of the USA again. But we all know whenever a high-profile incident occurs, it always comes up with endless theories and conspiracies. And you will be shocked to know that there's been this big thing with the FBI uncovering covering links between a shooter targeting ex-President Trump and connections to the Democratic Party. It's causing a huge political uproar, stirring up the whole partisan mess in the U.S. Apparently, the shooter's motivations and ties might be tied to some extreme Democratic influences. This is just adding more fuel to the already fiery political divide and sparking debates about violence and its ties to mainstream politics. In the shooter, there was a shooter who was on an elevated position uh, outside the, uh, the farm show ground where the rally was taking place. That tallies with what our eyewitnesses have been telling us. They say In a bold statement to his donors on Monday, President Joe Biden declared that he is done talking about the debate, urging the Democratic Party to refocus its efforts on the real challenge ahead, Donald Trump. With the political landscape becoming increasingly fraught with distractions, Biden emphasized the need for unity and clarity of purpose within the party. He implored his supporters to set aside any internal squabbles and instead concentrate on the urgent task of confronting the former president's influence and policies. Biden's call to action reflects a strategic pivot, aiming to galvanize the party as they navigate the complexities of the upcoming election cycle. We need to move forward. Look, we have roughly 40 days till the convention, 120 days till the election. We can't waste any more time being distracted, Biden said in a private call with donors Monday, according to a recording obtained by Politico. I have one job, and that's to beat Donald Trump. I'm absolutely certain I'm the best person to be able to do that. So we're done talking about the debate. It's time to put Trump in a bullseye, Biden said. President Joe Biden recently delivered a forceful message to hundreds of top Democratic donors and bundlers in the National Finance Committee, underscoring his determination to solidify party unity amid growing internal dissent. This message, part of a broader strategy to stem defections within the Democratic Party, highlights the urgency with which Biden and his allies are addressing emerging fractures. Earlier in the day, 
Biden sent a fiery missive to congressional Democrats, unequivocally declaring his intention to remain in the presidential race despite calls from approximately half a dozen members for him to step aside. This adamant stance signals Biden's resolve to lead and his confidence in his administration's direction, aiming to reassure supporters and consolidate his position. Compounding the political intrigue, recent developments have suggested potential Democratic involvement in the recent assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump. The FBI's ongoing investigation has uncovered links between the shooter and Democratic affiliations, adding a layer of complexity and controversy to an already tense political landscape. These revelations have intensified scrutiny on the Democratic Party, prompting debates about ideological extremism and the potential for political violence within mainstream politics. Biden's proactive communication to his supporters and congressional colleagues underscores his commitment to maintaining control and cohesion within the party, while the unfolding investigation into the assassination attempt on Trump raises critical questions about the intersection of political rivalry and security. As these events continue to evolve, the Democratic Party faces significant challenges in navigating internal divisions and addressing the broader implications of these startling developments. Agencies that have been engaged in making sure that the people who, and we have more detail to come relative to other injured, other people maybe injured in the audience. I don't have all that detail. We'll Several donors who participated in the call describe President Biden as forceful and strong. During the meeting, he took four questions, one of which focused on his plans for the next debate. In response, Biden outlined his strategy with a succinct and assertive declaration, attack, 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 according to one of the participants on the call. This aggressive stance highlights Biden's determination to confront his opponents head on and underscores his commitment to a vigorous campaign as he seeks to galvanize support and maintain his leadership position within the Democratic Party. Biden repeated multiple times that he would not be leaving the race. I'm telling you, I'm not going anywhere, folks. I'm in this to the end, and I'm going to beat Trump, I promise you. He touted the grassroots support he observed during his 10-day cross-country tour following the debate, which took him from Georgia to Wisconsin to Pennsylvania. Throughout the tour, he witnessed enthusiastic backing from local communities, reinforcing his campaign's momentum. Biden also expressed his gratitude to his donors for their unwavering support, acknowledging their crucial role in sustaining his efforts and propelling his campaign forward. I appreciate you hanging in there with me. I realize you're getting a lot of heat, he said. Instead of airing public concerns about his campaign, Biden argued that the party should focus its ire on Trump. He criticized the former president for having gotten away with doing nothing for the last 10 days except driving around in his golf cart, bragging about scores he doesn't score. Biden emphasized that Democrats needed to concentrate on the real issues at stake, such as what Trump would do to abortion rights, Medicare, Social Security, and prescription drug prices if re-elected. Despite Biden's call to unity and his strategic focus on Trump, lingering concern and frustration persist within the high-dollar donor community about Biden's ability to beat Trump in the upcoming November election. These doubts underscore the challenges Biden faces in reassuring his base and securing the confidence of his most influential supporters. I'm hearing from a lot of people who think he should get out, and I'm not getting a whole lot if he should stay in, said one donor on the call, granted anonymity to speak candidly. I've also had people tell me, I'm not giving anymore. And now a number of Republicans are pointing fingers at President Joe Biden for Saturday's shooting at a Trump rally, with some citing Biden's recent statement to donors in which he allegedly said, it's time to put Trump in a bullseye. This remark has sparked significant controversy, with critics arguing that it may have incited violence against the former president. The incident has intensified political tensions as Republicans accused Biden of using incendiary rhetoric that could potentially provoke dangerous actions. As the investigation into the shooting continues, the fallout from Biden's statement is likely to further polarize an already deeply divided political landscape. In a Politico article shared Monday, Biden reportedly told donors, I have one job and that's to beat Donald Trump. I'm absolutely certain I'm the best person to be able to do that. So we're done talking about the debate. It's time to put Trump in a bullseye. This statement has drawn considerable attention and criticism, with some interpreting it as overly aggressive and potentially inflammatory. The remark has fueled accusations from Republicans that Biden's rhetoric could incite violence, particularly in light of the recent shooting at a Trump rally. As political tensions continue to escalate, the impact of Biden's words on the already charged political climate remains a significant concern. 
Biden's comments underscore his strategic focus on contrasting his vision with Trump's perceived lack of engagement and leadership. As the election approaches, his assertion reflects a determined effort to shift attention back to substantive issues and to energize his campaign against Trump's presidency. And in the past 50 Cent seems to be unlike Joe Biden. He has always been seen to. And recently, 50 Cent sent social media ablaze with a post blasting President Biden for taking another beach vacation in Delaware as chaos continued to unfold in the war between Israel and Hamas. Hey, Joe, get the F up. We in trouble, man. 50 Cent posted on Instagram over the weekend with a screenshot from an article titled Biden Hits the Beach with Middle East, Congress in Chaos. In a follow-up post that screenshots an article with a headline saying, 50 Cent Flames Biden, the rapper wrote, We got some real S going on out here, Joe. What's the plan to get a tan and chill come on now? And you see, this attack is not only limited to politics now because any leader of the world who gets attacked is no joke. Be it the general public and a celebrity, everyone has the right to talk about the matter, and in this matter, celebrities are not stepping back. Other than Fiddy, Kid Rock, who has become a vocal figure for the far-right movement, posted a video to Instagram on Saturday wearing a white boy of the year baseball cap. You F with Trump, you F with me, the singer said. Moreover, John Rich from the musical duo Big and Rich posted the viral photo of Trump with his fist in the air with the caption, they couldn't beat him in a fair contest so they f him, but they missed. In a different post, Rich posted a video from the rally, during which Trump said fight moments after the shooting occurred and captioned it, bring it on. Rapper Soldier Boy reposted a video of the shooting and wrote, ain't no way they just shot at Trump. Trump's family is also in a state of extreme sadness. Ivanka Trump has broken her silence following a possible assassination attempt on their father, Donald Trump. Thank you for your love and prayers for my father and for the other victims of today's senseless violence in Butler, Pennsylvania. The former first daughter posted on X after the Trump rally shooting. I am grateful to the Secret Service and all the other law enforcement officers for their quick and decisive actions today. I continue to pray for our country, Ivanka added. I love you, Dad, today and always. And so you think his fans won't have reacted? One person wrote, Now Mr. President need to get bulletproof to stand in to talk to us because this world is getting worse, I see not good. Trump 2024, you heard. May God be with Mr. Trump. Another one added, now people are going to double down on voting for him. It's either that or civil war. That's it for today. See you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.